Yo, back with another video. Um, question for y'all. What have you been putting into your brain? What have you been putting into your spirit? What have you been letting in your ears? What have you been putting before your eyes? Uh, this video is called Spiritual Rehab. Rehab of the Mind. Um, I just want to share a story with you guys, man. It's a, my own personal story, you know what I mean? Um, so, from as old as I can remember, um, I think... <clears throat> no, I'll start when I was a teenager. From the age of 14, when I got a computer, I would always be on that computer. I had the internet in my room, um, and I would just always be researching stuff. Usually sports stuff. It was usually sports. From a little kid, I've always, I had always loved football. Um, I would always be researching about the NFL, and researching about this player, and this, this, and that, right? Um, I'd be listening to the Washington Redskins uh, football games on, on the little radio thing, the online. And um, I'd be following on the game cast because I couldn't watch, you know, they, they didn't play the games on <clears throat> most of the major channels most of the time because they was terrible. But I'd be watching them and um, or listening to them. But that's all I did with my, my, my uh, teenage years when I was at home, at least. You know what I mean? I did other stuff when I was at the house, but it was either MySpace or or football stuff, or Yahoo News. You know what I'm saying? Let's fast forward. No longer 14, no longer 17. 30 now, right? I'm a Christian now. Um, and I have a family now. But what do I do with my time? I use a lot of it to watch basketball, to listen to sports. To watch the highlights. What's James Harden doing? Oh, James Harden's getting traded. Oh, what's Ky what's Kyrie doing? Oh, Kyrie. Oh, what, what's going on with the Lakers? LeBron ain't going. You know what I mean? A lot of these same things still going on. Now, mind you, I'm still I'm still in my word. I'm still reading the word of God. I'm still listening to sermons, right? Still doing all that as well, but also doing this other stuff. And if it isn't sports, it's Oh, what's going on with uh, Russia, man? Oh, what's going on in Florida? Oh, they had this happen? What? Oh, there's another shooter? What? whoop de whoop Always going through news, right? Always learning about what the next country's doing, what, what, what's going on in this place or that place or what local news. And the, the point uh, I'm trying to drive home for y'all is that I could tell you every single player, almost every single player, that's been on the Lakers the last three years. I don't even like the Lakers. You know what I mean? I'm not even a Lakers fan. I'm not a Nets fan. I'm not a um, a Oakland, uh, you know, just any any team, Miami Heat, whoever, whoever you want to bring up, you know what I mean? Trailblazers, whatever. I can tell you about them. I can tell you about football teams. I can tell you about people that got drafted, you know what I mean, to the NFL. I don't even watch the NFL. I can watch the NFL in a few, really in a few years like that. I've tap in every once in a while but i still know why because i'm so ingrained the news that sources and people talk about so ingrained in my mind still right and so it really just hit me like ton of bricks just like i don't know it was yesterday or the day i think it was the day before it was the day before it just hit me man god really convicted me and um through his word and i praise him for it i thank him for it man because i'm like got to the point where I realized how can I ever really be learning and doing the things of the Lord if I'm so focused on all this other stuff like how can you how can I digest three movies a week even with the Christian rap and uh you know other gospel music worship music I listen to um you know digest one to two albums of that and you know, watching movies and doing this with my children and, and hang out with my wife and we, we listen to this sermon or I'm listening to the sermon by myself. Is all this stuff is just um convoluted and all kind of just mixed up and piled in on top of each other, right? And like what am I really learning? How am I really growing if if I'm just pouring in so many different um things into my brain that you know don't even mesh well this is not like i'm talking about like 
I'm not saying to get rid of hobbies. That's not my point. My, my, that's not my point. But my point is that let's say someone's going out to golf, right? They're hitting. They're, they're playing golf, right? While they're golfing, they can literally meditate on the things of the Lord. They can literally like think about how good God is and uh, some of the testimonies, the things that's been going on. Think about some of the people they've been praying for. They can pray for them while they're while they're golfing. You know what I mean? Like they. You can do this while maybe you're going swimming or hanging out at the park. There's things that you can do that doesn't um, distract or or hinder what God's trying to do in your life. But what, what I just realized is that, that God wants me to have a rehab of my mind, to take back control of my mind and to put the things of him in, in my mind, his word and um, his thoughts into my mind so that I can really be effective, be a true witness, be a true prayer warrior, be a true um, father and a husband. Like <clears throat> when when I'm so focused on all this other stuff, there's no way. And so I, I just wrote all these scriptures down for you guys, man, because I, I know there's someone that's going to listen to this video that can relate, that can relate to the addictions that have been driving a wedge between uh, you and the Lord. And um, I just know it's time for us to start kicking the addictions that are driving the wedge between us and the Lord, man. Um, the the first question I, I just had for y'all before I, I, I gave y'all the scriptures was, do you think it, you can be too into Jesus? Like, do you think it's possible to, to, be too, to be too heavenly minded, as they say? Don't be too heavenly minded um, that you're no earthly good. That's that's the old saying, right? But I think that I think that saying's a lie, bro. I really do, because that that's the concept of make sure that you're um, still participating in what the rest of the normal normal people are participating in, so that you you're not you know can't hang out with them and think yourself too good. But I want to give y'all scripture, man. Um, Luke two uh, thirty six to thirty nine. Let's go to it real quick. So we see <clears throat> that there's a prophetess named Anna. She's a daughter of uh, Fen Fen Fenwell, I guess his name is. I'm not sure of the tribe of Asher. Uh, she, she was an older lady, and it says that she had been a widow <clears throat> of 84 years. That's amazing. Like that's crazy to think like someone could be without their spouse. She was with with her her husband for seven years, and then he died. And it says that she didn't depart from the temple, but serve God with fasting and, and, and prayers and praying um, night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Um, this is when, when, when Jesus is born and her and uh, Simeon, if you go up a couple scriptures, Simeon says in, in verse 29, um, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, um, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. I mean, I just think that's so beautiful because they say this when they bring him, uh, Jesus to, to get all the customs done in the temple and stuff like that. And um, it says that he came by the spirit into the temple. I just think it's amazing, man. He was so connected with God. He was so waiting on the Lord that he came into the temple and would just praise the Lord. Like Jesus is here. Uh, Yeshua is here. Salvation has came. We've been waiting for you. Redemption in Jerusalem, redemption in Israel it's come. Everything we've been waiting for for a lifetime, it's come. Anna was the same way. She had been waiting in the temple. So there's no way she was about to miss out. You know what I mean? She was the first one in line. She was waiting right there. And I just think it's amazing, man. We can be told or think, not even be, just be told. Some of us are just thinking. I would always tell myself, well, you know, you know, it's good. I do this. It's good. It's good. It's good to do that, blah, blah, blah. But like, we, why, why, why? Why can't we be so excited about 
waiting on the Lord? Why shouldn't we be so excited to be keep reading his word and after we read to be meditating, whether we're eating, whether we're in the bathroom, whether we're taking a shower, whatever we're doing, um, just meditating on God's word, on his promises, on who he is, his character, what he's done in our life. That's such a beautiful thing, man. It's lost. It's like a, you know, when they say a lost art, that's a, that's a lost practice, man, that I believe that God's calling all his people to do. I'm not just saying this is for the prophet, for the pastor. This is for all his people. You know what I mean? And so I, I was just thinking to myself, bro, when, when, when God just put that on my, convicted me the other day when I was reading his word. And it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a sorrowful, super sorrowful conviction. I felt sorry right when it happened. I did. Yeah, I did. But immediately it was like a joy came into my heart. I was like, God, I've really missed your word. I really missed like the the time I used to invest and just be so just loving your word, God, and just um, amazed by who you are, Lord. And um, I just want to share this with you guys, man, because it's such a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful thing. Um, so... Uh, <clears throat> The, the first scripture, I gave y'all the first one, but the the, the, the next scripture I want to give y'all is uh, Mephibosheth. Uh, when he's talking to David, David uh, gets run out by Absalom. He's out in the wilderness. Um, Ziba goes with David, uh, Mephibosheth's servant. David comes back and um, he says, how come you didn't come with me? And Mephibosheth says, I told him to get the <clears throat> the, the horse ready or the donkey ready. And he just took off. He, he was plotting on me. And so whether that's true or not true, it doesn't really say. But we can see if you read between the lines, we can see it says um, this is Second Samuel 19 verses 24 to 30. It says that Mephibosheth hadn't taken care of his feet because he was crippled. He hadn't uh, washed himself. He hadn't washed his clothes since David had been gone. He says that when David says, oh, well, um, since you know, I don't know if you're telling the truth. He's telling the truth. I'm going to split all your belongings 50-50 with Zeba and then you get the rest. And he says, let him have it all. He can keep it all of it. Um, you've come back to your home in peace. You've come back in peace. He said, you you gave me great. <clears throat> um, what's the word? What's the word? Just um, forgiveness and great care that he didn't not only kill him, but gave him so much belongings when, when he first found out about him um because you know he was jonathan's son y'all can read the story if, you, if you're not familiar with it but mephibosheth was just excited just that david that came back his lord that came back um his master i should say just so y'all understand um and that's how we can be with jesus man like just so excited that yeshua is coming back bro yeshua is coming for us and he said stay ready stay ready faithful servant in the house is not going to be getting drunk it's not going to be beating the other servants and not just um just being gluttonous and doing everything else but keeping the mind on the lord keeping good care of the house keeping good care of the other servants being a servant unto the other servants until his master returns and so i want to give you these scriptures um real quick um Psalms 37.4. Um, I'm, I'm not going to read every single one of these scriptures. I'm, I'm going to give you all the scriptures. I'm going to put them down in the uh, in the, the description below. I like that when people can go the description below. And it's a video. I don't technically have a description below right now, but you can see it. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. Anyways, I digress. <clears throat> Let's see. Psalms 37.4. My wife told me this in a, like, it was like uh, three years ago. I think she said this to me and I had read through songs, you know what I mean? But I just, I, I don't, it's like, I, my eyes missed this altogether. I had never, I had never seen this verse. Just never seen it. I was like, what? It's so simple, but it just was profound when she said it to me. He said, delight yourself, delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. But that first part, though, is that first part that I want you to take note of when it says delight yourself also in the Lord. We get so delighted in all these other things. When, when God is our delight, he'll give us. He knows we want these things. He knows there's things we want and we're seeking after him. Those things aren't evil in themselves. But where is your delight and what's your delight in? You know what I'm saying? My delight's been in sports. My delight's been in watching James Harden play basketball. I'm just being real with you. It's been in watching all these people do other stuff. And I'm just sitting at home just doing nothing. Just watching them do it. My delight should be in the Lord, man. And, man, it's coming back for real. It really is. I'm just being honest with you. Like, it's not that I didn't delight in God. But I was delighting in that stuff a whole lot more or just as much and that's just being real and you examine your own heart like paul says i'm examining my heart and just being honest with you so that to help you hopefully be honest with yourself you know what i'm saying and um or just to stay mindful of, of not doing the other thing if you are um keeping a good mind and a good heart man um but yeah uh, the other one is Deuteronomy um, 30, uh, verse 19, um, when, when it says, um, when it says, choose life and not death. You know what I mean? Choose life and not death. It says, you know, I've laid before you blessings and, and curses, life and death. Choose life. It tells you right there that's, that's Moses speaking in Deuteronomy. He's talking to Israel. Um, Romans 12, 1 to 2. Um, Therefore, I, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Um, you know, what's plead to know what is pleasing and the perfect will of God. Like, go through it. I'm, I'm just I'm going through quickly. You know what I mean? I'm paraphrasing some of these. But, man, like, renewing the mind. That That's the main part in verse 2 when he, when he says, by the renewing of the mind, be transformed, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, the renewing. It's time to renew our mind. Matthew 6, verse 33. Paraphrase once again. Go look it up. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. If there's things you need and want. He says he doesn't forget about you. The birds aren't more important than you, but yet he feeds the birds of the sky. They be chilling on these lamp poles and they be chilling on these wires. And then the trees. They don't got no food store. They don't got a refrigerator, <laughs> but they be fed. You see them out there every day singing. It's amazing, man. God doesn't forget about you. Colossians 3, uh, 1 through 4. I forgot what that. What is that one? Oh, yeah. Set your mind on the things above. Man, set your mind on the things above. With, with I want to read that one. That one's, yeah, that one's, yeah. This is a scripture I live by. Um, when I look up music, that's like the, really, the, the whole motto, the whole of look up music is really set your mind on the things. Look up is, is really just talking about that, man. It's not, it has nothing to do with your real eyes, you know what I mean? Um. It says, uh, Colossians 3, verse 1 through 4. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Listen to that. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen. Amen. Romans 8, 5 through seven this was another good one it says is that the, that the flesh is hostile towards the spirit the things of the spirit and the things of the spirit are hostile towards the things of the flesh and so we we gotta we gotta submit to what the holy spirit is doing and where he's leading us because they're at conflict it's like um israel or jacob and esau you know what i mean it's like the, the, the nations around Israel, the Canaanites and the Israelites, always always at war with these, against each other. You know what I mean? They look the same. They look similar, but they're so different. You get what I'm saying? They're so different. 
they don't have the promises. They don't have the covenant with the Lord. And it, it's, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but this one right here, 1 John 2. 1 John 2, let's go to it. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the thing, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Check this out. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Do you see that? But he who does the will of God abides forever. You can go to Matthew 7 when he says, um, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. But I will say, I don't, I, I don't know you. He's going to say, I don't know you. But only those who does the will of his father who is in heaven. You don't want God to say that to you. I don't want God to say that to me. When I get to him, I don't want him to say, I don't know you. You did all these other things. You were so interested in everything else. And you talked about the Bible a little bit. You shared the Bible. You witnessed. He says He says these people are going to be doing miracles. You get what I'm saying? They're casting out demons. This is not no average Christian in the church. You get what I'm saying? These people are casting out demons. They're they out doing the most. You get what I'm saying? And that's why when he says, um, but your righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees. What is he saying? The Pharisees knew everything. These people that speak in tongues, blah, 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 and they're casting out demons. I reject you. Blah, 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 blah. They're doing all that stuff, but don't know God. Do you want that to be you? Of course not. This is not, I don't even want to make a joke about it. You don't want that to be you. I do not want that to be me or my family. Do you get what I'm saying? I want God to say, well done, faithful servant. Enter into your master's rest. That's what I want to hear from the Lord on that day. But our minds, our minds are like cups. These these bodies are like cups. We're vessels. Stuff's constantly being poured in. Constantly. Our brains are like antennas. When, when, have you ever been on, on a radio station where you hear one station and it's singing one thing, but then another one and it sounds like a talk radio show? But both of them on the same signal, that's exactly how our brains are. Think about it. All these bugs, they have antennas and everything like that. That's exactly how our brains are. If we're not careful, that's why it says test the spirit. First John 4, test the spirits. Not every spirit is of God. We need to filter what's going through our mind. Jeremiah says cast down every imagination. We need to filter what's going through our minds so that we can know what the perfect will of God is when he's really speaking to us or when we're just um, speaking to ourselves and um, being delusional, deluding ourselves. We have to be careful what we're putting into our brains and into our spirits. That's why when we hear all this junk rap music, when we hear all this junk, I don't care if it's country, there's junk country music, terrible country music, there's junk. Every on the, the line. And so, and this word, it just really just want to share this with y'all, man. I really, this really hit home for me. It really hit, you know what I mean? And so I really hope that this will bless you, seriously. Um, I, I want to share this last scripture with you. It's, it's, it's um, John 17, 14 through 17. I want you to understand that God says once our mind has been renewed, his word is in us. It says that in 1 John and multiple other places, his word is in us. Now the prayer becomes to keep us while we're in the world. Once we, once, there's some of you that get this message and this isn't trying to just bark at you and be like, you know, you need it. No, there's some of you that already gotten this. They're already with a place where, where I'm coming from. They've already been there and y'all are just maintaining what you got. And and really the 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 fight at, at that point is just maintaining, staying in the Lord. Because 
right, right here. Let's read it. It says, John 17, 14. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I pray that you should take them out of the world. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. He says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. He's not saying, God, take them all and take them all right now. He's saying, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Man. And then you go down to verse 20. It says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. What you do reflects on going to help the next person down the line, generations down the line, by you receiving God's word and focusing all your heart and treasure in him. It's going to reflect and pass down. That's why people talk so much about their grandma saying, my grandma had great faith, man. My mom had great faith. My, you know, my so-and-so, usually it's a grandma, but sometimes, you know, grandpa had great faith, man. Um, and, and he was a good man or she was a good woman and prayer warrior. We hear always hear stories about that. And we wonder why we're spiritually hungry, though. We wonder why I, I'm always stressed and why I'm depressed or why, um, you know, what I mean, I'm not close to God. You don't need to speak in tongues to be close to God. You need to get in his word and meditate and think about the things of him and stop putting everything in and mixing it like a KFC buffet bowl. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to be super funny or nothing like that, but it's like, <laughs> I think it's just jumbo with everything. You know what I mean? It's got corn. It's got mashed potatoes. got chicken. It don't know what it want to be. You know what I mean? Like, is it, is it a chicken bowl or is it a mashed potato? Like, for real. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll I, I be, I be, I be having humor, but for real, like, our mind, you don't want it to be a spiritual buffet. Everything is spirit. You know what I mean? He says, the words I speak to you are spirit. But there's other spirits that are trying to infiltrate your mind. And so let's put the things of the Lord in it. And let's be mindful of the things we do when we go to the park. If we don't go to the park, if we're staying at home, we're watching something on TV. Can we meditate and think about the things of the Lord? This is why those old school preachers said, don't even have a TV. Don't even, you know, do this or that. And people say, oh, they're too crazy. They're too radical. You're going to say they're crazy and radical until you realize what, what Jesus was saying in Matthew 5 about if your eyes deceive you, pluck it out. Your hand deceives you, cut it off. You know what I mean? It's better to enter into heaven with one of your hands cut off than for you to enter into hell with all your body intact. If you want to have everything that the world has to offer, you're going to reap what you sow. So let's reap. In righteousness that's reaping the spirit you know what i mean and sow the fruits of the spirit so that's it man i know that that was a, a a sizable word um but i pray that you guys reflect on that and um man god's just blessing me right now god's so good because man, he's he's good for many reasons but uh right now when i say this i see the flaws i have you know what i mean i see that i don't deserve his grace but he he always calls me back to himself. He always draws me back to himself. And um, I'm just grateful, man. I'm grateful that he cares about me like that. He cares about you. If you're listening to his message, that means you're alive. You have breath in your lungs to be redeemed to the Lord, man. So praise God, man. Praise Yah. Thank you, Father God. I pray that you would bless anyone that listens to this word, that you would give them um, just a new, refreshed heart, the word of the day. In the Bible, I have said, you will give us a new heart and a new spirit, God, to obey your commandments, to seek after you, to have a tender heart, God, and not a heart of stone, Father. I pray that I won't have a heart of stone because this is not just for the people listening, God. This is for me. So I pray that you forgive me for my sins. And I know you have already by the blood of Jesus. I know you have, God. But I pray that you would 
um, continue to draw me to yourself and draw me away from the world, God, that I won't worship um, these golden calves. I won't worship the idols of this world, God, of the current age and the technology and everything that's here, Lord. But I worship you and that the people that are listening to this or other words similar to this, God, that you would just continue to draw them and that they won't even need words like this. They will just be in the word. They'll be with fellowship, God, with other um, brothers and sisters in Christ, God, that they just know that all they need is you. They don't need nothing else, God. You're sufficient. So I thank you, Father. Bless my family. Um, bless my children with this word, God. Bless my wife. Bless um, my friends and, and, and um, their families, God, and um, their their covenants, Lord. And just I just thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name, amen. God bless you guys, man. I love you guys, and um, thank you for, for tapping in. And yeah, keep making more videos. Later.